The question from a Western scientific perspective is, was Buddha just a nice guy? And this question comes up, uh, actually has been asked specifically, that very question, as a result of neuroscientists talking to the Dalai Lama. Because when you have the, the mind and life dialogues, the, the question arises that after the, uh, the Dalai Lama is talking about Buddhism and the effects of advanced meditation and so on, the Dalai Lama then says, well, there are stories about reincarnation and about the divination of oracles and things of that sort in, in Buddhist lore. And it's not just lore, they experience it. And they say, well, how, you neuroscientists, how do you explain how this is? And they don't have anything to say because the neurosciences as currently understood, there is no, no such thing as reincarnation or telepathy or any other strange thing like that because it's working within a, a context where there's none allowed. In which case then, well, was Buddha just a nice guy? From a neuroscience perspective, the answer is yes. We don't know if he was really nice or not, but we can assume he was nice, but that's all. So then all of the additional stories about Buddha, the supernormal things and the supernatural things and all of that, the rest of the lore that, that echoes down through history, not just for Buddha, but for Jesus and Mohammed and Moses and everyone else you can imagine, all of it, all of those stories are seen purely as embellished fantasies. This is like putting on an orthodox scientific hat. That's the only way that we can understand it. That story begins to change though when you look at the scientific evidence suggesting that some of what they talked about, which seems supernormal, actually can be demonstrated in the laboratory. So in, in my book Supernormal, I, I focus on the Yoga Sutras because it kind of gives a prescription of what kinds of effects you, you can imagine to see, some of which have been tested in the laboratory and some of them have been shown to be true. That puts a very different spin on the Yoga Sutras, and for that matter, on the stories about Buddha and elsewhere, because now we're going to say that, uh, in the case of the Yoga Sutras, that Patanjali wasn't spinning fairy tales. He wasn't telling stories. He was describing in a matter-of-fact way that if you do these practices long enough under these conditions, you will develop telepathy, you will develop precognition, you will develop all kinds of interesting things.